Hi, welcome once again to vehicle maintenance and repairs.com. Gary De La Cruz, your host and mechanic. Today I'm going to show you how to do an oil change and a spark plug change on a Ford Figo, which is also a um, decently popular vehicle here in South Africa, Cape Town as well. And um, you know, without further ado, let me show you the car. <laughs> this is about uh, maybe a 2013 model. Okay, this car at the moment does have about 115,000 kilometers on it. Okay, it's a, a fairly decent car. All right, um, uh, overhead cam multi valve engine. Um, it does have a cam belt, it's a, it's a cam belt motor. So, um, you know, we're going to be doing a, just a basic oil change, and I'll show you how to replace the air filter and the oil filter. Um, you know, and we'll do the oil change as well. So, without further ado, let's get it going. So if you have watched any of my videos before, especially the ones on oil changes, you will know that I'm a stickler for um, flushing engines. I use uh, the Spaniard flush. Okay, 375 more uh, in this bottle can treat up to five liters of oil. So what we do is we warm the car up. You will never put um, flush into an ice cold engine. So you warm it up for a few minutes, maybe five minutes or so. Uh, add the contents of the bottle. Okay, into the engine, uh, you know, with the, the old oil in place. Okay, make sure that you put in um, the whole amount. Okay, once that is uh, put in, um, we replace the cap. All right, and then we will just make sure your cap is nice and secure. Um, I normally use my telephone, uh, okay, um, and I use a timer. So we'll press start, we'll give it 15 minutes. Um, we'll get the engine started, okay. And we'll get it we'll get it to idle so just remember that while you are doing all this just monitor uh, the vehicle you know check for any leaks and so forth while i wait for this process to complete i normally uh, go around the vehicle and do a check you know i check the tires i check tire dents ball joints anything obvious you know we check the wipers and we check that all the lights work and so on and so forth you know we'll just do a, a, a sort of safety inspection as well all right and then once the 15 minutes are up uh, we'll drain the oil, get the filter out, take the air filter off. I'll show you how to get to the inside to, so that you can take out the filter element, the air filter element. We will replace the oil filter and the four spark plugs that are in the vehicle. Alright, so we'll wait for that 15 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to be doing my inspection services. I'll get back to you once the 15 minutes are up. This is a Duratec 1.4 engine. Okay, it is a multi-valve engine. And it's an overhead cam um, and with a cam belt. Okay, so the cam belt needs to be replaced with a 100,000 kilometers. This car is on 115, so I'm going to recommend that this cam belt is replaced. And when we do that job, I will form it. Okay, so time is up, 15 minutes are, are over. We'll dismiss that, uh, get the car switched off, and then we'll go down to the bottom and we'll get the oil drained while it's still hot. Alright, so we'll be needing a size 13 uh, ring spanner. Just loosen up the drain plug for the oil. Okay, make sure you have your uh, oil receptacle ready to just catch that oil as it drains. Okay, we turn it out with a spanner until, um, until we need to we turn it out until we can turn it with a by hand okay and as you get to that last bit you need to control it nicely so that when that oil does start flowing you get your hands out of the way yeah that was a bit of a mishap there <laughs> uh, didn't aim that one right but anyway so we're busy draining the oil and when the oil is drained I'll show you how to remove the filter. Okay so to loosen up um, the oil filter I use a chain okay and uh, I use a chain to loosen the filter. So when it's loose enough okay um, I can do the rest by hand okay we'll just loosen it up have your uh, oil receptacle handy at the bottom because you will have a little bit of oil in that filter so you turn that filter off okay all the way and um, the important thing 
as always, is to make 100% sure that the seal had come off, had not come off from the oil filter. Because if it does, then we're in for, you know, you put another filter on top of that old seal, uh, you have problems with sealing off, obviously. All right, so just give that a chance to drip nicely and once it's dripped you just wipe up all your oil spills and that is how easy it is to remove the oil filter and then of course guys as i have mentioned before please discard your oil responsibly what i do i normally um, throw my oil into a uh, 210 liter drum over here and then um, you know there is a company called oil call they'll come when uh, when i phone them when the when this drum is full They'll come, they'll take the drum, and then just right in front of my place over here, they'll pump all the oil out of here and give me the empty can back. Then they'll give me a certificate proving that I have discarded my oil safely, um, responsibly. You know, our environment is very fragile, especially in this day and age. Um, you know, and we don't need to add to it by flushing oil down the sewer system and so on and so forth, you know. So just discard your oil, you know, uh, safely, uh, put it into your into a five litre can and take it, you know, to uh, one of these collection points in your neighbourhood. All right, I'll uh, use, uh, use a little video just to show you how I discard my oil. Firstly, I throw it into this big drum and then oil call comes and let's see how they do that. <laughs> I want to remove the air filter housing okay so that we can access the spark plugs number one this pipe over here you just basically give it a half a twist okay forward like that until you sort of pull it out all right this one this is a permanent clamp but you can you you know we can get this pipe off you just need to sort of wiggle it gently get that out of the way and then of course your breather pipe down there Okay, you just sort of pull that out of the way. You know, it just basically cl clicks in. Okay, so it just pulls out of the way quite easily. And then we have these two size, te um, size 10 head bolts, which we need to loosen off. Okay. So I'll use a power, um, you know, a speed wrench with a size 10 socket. Okay, just to uh, nice and easily remove that um, remove those uh, two special bolts you can see they actually self tapper threads okay so with that we can just lift it up here's two grommets pull up on on one side here pull that up and pull that up and you will see the two grommets okay there's two rubber grommets okay which basically fits you know it basically fits into those lugs okay so the lugs push up into the grommets um to hold the the the, the back side of the filter so we'll take that filter we'll take it around we'll put it on the bench and i'll show you how to remove the air filter inside there so quite simply there are 10 of these screws okay that holds down the back the back cover and they don't always come out that easily if you have to loosen it with a spanner it's going to be a size 8 because it takes a size 8 head okay if you have a, a little drill like I have with the right bit you know you can take it out fast quickly but sometimes you know you get the one that uh, maybe the head is spoilt or whatever they give you an alternative okay which is a size 8 spanner to loosen up so this is actually quite good that this has happened just to show you that there is an alternative way of loosening them up okay so once you have all 10 those little uh, screws loosed loosened up you can just take it uh, lift it out of the way okay make sure you do not lose any of these little uh, screws that holds everything back and there you can see what the air filter actually looks like pretty dirty really needed to be replaced okay so these two halves they basically 
you know, join up once you have your new filter fitted. Okay, you just take the half, you fit it into the recesses, you put your new filter in of course, I'll show you how we do that. And then, um, you know, once you have all that down, you can just tie down your 10 screws. Okay, which is uh, pretty basic and simple. Okay, so we need to re replace uh, the spark plugs. Alright, what we'll basically do is, you know, just loosen up uh, the, the, the spark plug um, wires okay which is basically pushed in through the spark plug tubes okay which connects to the spark plug down there we'll take them out of the way all four of them okay with it being a four cylinder we can have four spark plug wires um, the back one is a little fiddly because it's short and then we'll take a long extension okay half inch dive with a uh, size 16 uh, socket all right long extension and we'll just go ahead and loosen anti-clockwise. We will loosen up the spark plugs. Okay, and when you're loose enough to turn by hand, you can just loosen up all the way. So there's various ways of retrieving the spark plug uh, from the spark plug tube. Um, the simplest way that I find is I just use a magnet, a little magnet over there. All right, you can see this is a long reach plug, okay? And also, this plug's got no washer on it. It's actually got a taper. So you gotta make sure that you tighten it up pretty nicely. All right, so I'll go ahead and remove all four, um, the rest of the spark plug, and get back to you. So I'm about to put in the new spark plugs. Um, what we normally do is we normally check that the gap is fine. Okay, so you just sort of make sure the electrode you know, it's straight, it's not bent down because uh, a lot of the times, you know, you can drop the box and it can close the gap. All right, you just make sure that the gap's fine. And then what I do, I normally use my little um, tube like that. Um, make sure that I thread the spark plug, pull the tube out, go ahead and do the next one. You know, we check the gaps. Um, and so on. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get these threaded. Well, so when you're happy that they're all nicely threaded, turned up against, we just give them a final tightening. Okay, with a long extension and a, and a ratchet, a bar. Okay, when they're tight enough, we'll start putting the spark plug wires back. Okay, when you um, put the spark plug wires uh, back onto the spark plugs, just make sure that you give them that final press and you'll hear that click. You'll hear that, uh, you know, that uh, spark plug, you know, it, it has a little uh, thing that goes over this unit of the spark plug. So when you press it, you know, you want to make sure that it clicks in nicely. Okay, so spark plugs fitted. Right, and now we can go ahead and uh, you know replace the, the oil filter if um, air, uh, air filter and um, the sump plug right so we have a new air filter AG1203 okay brand new so we'll put the filter in position like that Okay, and we'll take the top cover and we'll put the top cover on. Then, of course, we have these 10 screws, okay, which we need to replace. You can see they're self tapping screws, okay, they're not, uh, it's not a, like a normal threaded screw. It's got a size 8 head, but it could also, it has a, a Torx, uh, a Torx fitting as well. So, you can either use a size 8 um, socket or spanner. Or you can use a Torx bolt spanner, and um, you know whichever whichever works for you. So I'm using a size eight um, socket in my in my drill, in my little portable drill, which just makes things so much easier, and you don't need to worry about cross threading because it's a uh, it's not a it's not a threaded ball, it's basically a self-tapping self thread. So you just need to make sure that they're all nice and tight. All right, and that is your air filter, ready to be fitted. Okay, um, as you know, you know, it has these two rubber grommets over here. 
and um, these two rubber grommets what I normally do I normally just take a little bit of rubber grease you know and I lubricate so that when we push it over those dowels that the dowels actually just slip in nicely you know and also for taking out eventually when you have to do it again on with the next service and I, I normally just lube them nicely don't use oil because oil will expand the rubber okay it's a rubber grease is a special formula it makes the rubber soft but it doesn't swell the rubber okay so that's the air filter fitter uh, um, uh, the air filter element fitted and the air filter housing is ready to be put back to the car onto the car so we have a new uh, oil filter a z551 okay what i normally do i just uh, put a little bit of oil on the on the gasket on the o-ring and uh, just give it a nice rubbing okay we make 100 percent sure that uh, it doesn't stick okay and it doesn't climb out of its groove uh, these forge have an unusual uh, sump plug it has a little rubber o-ring over there to seal it off but as usual i normally take a little bit of threading tape and i put the threading tape onto the threads just to help it seal okay you can never harm so you don't actually replace the gasket or, or sump washer here okay you use the same one or if you want to you know after a few oil changes it is recommended to replace the complete sump plug but for now that rubber still feels nice and hard um, sorry that the rubber feels nice and soft and if you look at it it's sort of protruding quite a bit so it's still got a bit of seal in it so let's go ahead and get these uh, this oil filter and the sump plug um, fitted. So before we put the oil filter on, we just make sure that we, we wipe that flange nice and clean. Okay, make sure that the flange is nice and clean, that there's no dirt, dust, grime on it. Okay, then the oil filter just basically get goes on, um, you screw it on by hand. Okay, just thread it. It's a uh, it's a spin-on filter. Make sure that you don't uh, hurt uh, cross the threads. That the threads go on um, properly. Okay, before you start putting pressure onto it. Okay, and it just basically you turn it on by hand and you tighten it by hand. No spanners. Okay, no spanners required. Turn it on as tight as you can by hand. Okay, and when it is tight enough by hand, just give it a good old wipe with your rag clean it up nicely okay and then it's time to fit the sump plug once again just do the wipe thing the clean thing okay we're taking our sump plug we're threading it by hand best that we can turn it in as far as you can by hand and then a size 13 spanner okay we'll tighten it up you can use a socket if you want to speed things up and um, you know i'm just using the spanner here quickly and getting it all nicely um, turned in we'll turn it against and then just give it a good old tightening there okay make sure you wipe off all your old spools and when we uh, after we fill the oil and we start at the car we're going to come and check for leaks So I normally started out with about three liters of oil. Okay, we'll throw that in there and uh, see how much more uh, we need to fill once we've put in the initial three liter. Uh, remember, the car is jacked up in front, so uh, you know the final um, oil level uh, should be taken with the car after we've started it up and the oil filter is filled and we've leveled the car off. So three liters initially, uh, take the dipstick, give the dipstick a good wipe, put the dipstick back in again, okay, and then we'll check the level, all right, you can see that it is on the minimum, okay, so I would put in uh, maybe another, I'll put in another liter, because remember that the oil filter must still be filled as well. So in goes another liter, put that uh, extra liter of oil in there. Um, my recollection is that this per engine normally takes about four liters, okay, including the filter, but we'll go through the procedure. 
Uh, we'll check the oil level one more time on the dipstick as you can see it is showing on the full mark but remember we still need to start the car up to fill the, 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 the to fill the filter but the car must also still be jacked um, you know to level it out so uh, let's go and start it up don't forget to put your oil filler cap back and secure it nicely make sure it's not going to come loose And then we'll go to the vehicle and uh, we'll keep an eye on our oil light when we start. So we've got our oil light over there. We'll start up and the oil light should go out within a short few seconds. Okay, as you can see it's gone out, engine is idling nicely, switch it off again, leave it off for a few seconds, put the ignition on, check that the oil light comes on. Right, so with the oil light on, we start it again, and within a few seconds it should just go out. So let's go and check for leaks. So we'll check the filter for any leaks. Okay, make sure that there's no dripping leaks, no oil dripping. And then we'll go around to the sun plug and make sure that the sun plug is nice and dry and that is nice and dry. So yes, we're happy that there is no oil leaks. Okay, so we've come to the end of this oil change and spark plug change. Um, so the final, um, with a car on the ground, checking the oil level and the oil level is 100% so this vehicle takes 4 liters of oil including the filter and then now all we need to do is put the air filter back on I'll show you how we do that quickly right remember I mentioned the grommets so I put some rubber grease in there okay so we'll turn that around and we put the two grommets let me just take you closer we'll put the grommet you know where the, where the uh, protrusion is we'll put the grommet in there okay one on either side we make sure that we have that in place we'll just push it down nicely and then of course we have our breather pipe which just basically clip, clicks in very easily and then this pipe we'll just give it a good we'll just give it a good push in okay remember the clamp we'll just give it a good push in like that and then we have our other pipe here which basically needs to be just put in and, and twisted okay you put it in and give it a, a light twist and then of course our two self-tapping bolts okay so with our two self-tapping bolts just given a nice start turn it in by hand as far as you can before you even consider putting a spanner to it okay a size 10 spanner and just remember that these soft tappers are basically going into plastic okay so you don't want to murder it i've seen a lot of these vehicles that come here and uh, they don't have the original bolts you know um, because they've been over tightened and the holes been made too big and so on so you know it's it's it's, it's not necessary just it's just to hold it down I, I just turn it until it goes against and then just give it a you know like a half a turn you know just to hold it there you can see you can shake that around a bit and that is nice and tight okay so let's go and hear what she sounds like We'll start her up. Sweet! Okay, so I've got a little joke for you. There's two names that Ford's are known by. Pokken or Dentote Raiden, that's in Afrikaans, which means very good car, or found in a rubbish, rubbish dump, and that's when you want to diss somebody. So don't accuse vehicle maintenance and repairs.com of not having a sense of humor. Until my next video, drive safely. See you soon.